Bonjour and welcome, viewers and students, to Let's Speak French, Parlant Français. These lessons on basic French are short and easy. And if you follow the program regularly, I can assure you that very soon you will be able to understand French quite easily. The previous session focused on indirect object pronouns, known as COE or complément d'objet indirect. In today's class, we will focus on those sentences that contain both direct and indirect objects. This lesson will be considered as the third and final part of the series on direct indirect objects. Today's lesson has been divided into three sections. In the first section, I will read out a French text in which the direct and indirect object pronouns occur several times. Then in the next section, I will explain the position of these object pronouns when a sentence has more than one object. I will also explain a few characteristics of direct and indirect objects. And finally, in the third section, we will do an exercise to revise what we learned in today's session. We'll begin the lesson with a French text. Charlotte's parents are expecting a second child and haven't yet told their daughter about it. They want to share the wonderful news with the entire family. So they organize a family dinner. Une réunion en famille. Mes parents sont très heureux, mais j'ignore pourquoi. Ils ne m'ont rien dit encore. Mais ça doit être une très bonne nouvelle car autrement, on n'invitera pas toute la famille. Ma mère m'explique qu'elle nous l'annoncera avant le dîner. Mais qu'est-ce que c'est que cette nouvelle? Voyons si papa va me la révéler. Non, pas de chance. Lui aussi, il ne dévoile rien. Cependant, il me dit que je dois être une bonne hôtesse. Il m'explique que lorsque les invités arrivent, Je dois leur faire la bise et ensuite je dois les emmener dans le jardin. Pourquoi est-ce que je ne peux pas jouer avec mes cousins? Mais je te l'ai expliqué, non? Tu joueras avec eux plus tard. Maintenant, viens, je veux te montrer quelque chose. Regarde-les, elles sont belles, n'est-ce pas, les fleurs? C'est pour moi? Non, ma chérie, c'est pour maman. Maman les a vus? Non, pas encore. Je vais les lui donner après l'annonce de la nouvelle. T'inquiète pas, ma petite. J'ai quelque chose pour toi aussi. Je te la donnerai le soir. Le soir, lorsqu'on est tous à table, papa nous annonce qu'il a une merveilleuse nouvelle. Tous le regardent avec anticipation. Élise est enceinte. On va avoir un bébé. Toute la famille applaudit. On est tous heureux. J'aurai un petit frère ou une petite sœur. Ah, quel bonheur! Ma cousine me donne un coup de coude et s'exclame. Je te l'avais dit, non? Oh, arrête, Amélie. Tu m'avais aussi dit que papa a peut-être gagné au loto ou qu'il a obtenu une promotion. So this was a short text where the direct and indirect object pronouns have been used several times. In the next section, I will explain to you all about these pronouns. In today's lesson, we will focus on the direct and the indirect object pronouns when they feature together in a sentence. In other words, in today's lesson, we will learn about the order and placement of pronouns when there is more than one object pronoun in a sentence. Since this is the third part of the series that focuses on direct and indirect objects, we will also examine a few other related points that we hadn't discussed in the previous two lessons. 
Let me begin by first displaying a table containing the direct object pronouns say o de and the indirect object pronouns say o e. As you can see from these two tables, the first and the second person singular and plural that is me, te, nu and vu are the same. It's only the third person which is different. So all you need to remember is that l, la, l apostrophe are direct object pronouns while lui and ler are indirect object pronouns. Let's now learn how to make a sentence using two object pronouns. The reason why an entire lesson has been built around the position of the object pronouns is because their position change for different constructions. So I have provided you with a chart which lists out the order of object pronouns when the sentence has more than one object. This is a fixed order which needs to be memorized. Indirect and direct object pronouns, order and position of pronouns. The first column consists of object pronouns that can refer to direct or indirect objects. The second column consists solely of direct object pronouns corresponding to the third person singular and plural forms. And the third column consists again of only indirect object pronouns corresponding to the third person singular and plural forms. Generally, the first object is always the direct object which is placed after the subject. Next comes the indirect object pronoun followed by the verb. Subject plus se o de plus se o e plus verb. For example, j'envoie la boîte à ma tante. I am sending the box to my aunt. In this sentence, la boîte is the direct object and à ma tante is the indirect object. So when we replace the objects with the appropriate object pronouns, la boîte will be replaced with la and à ma tante will be replaced with lui because the indirect object is third person singular. J'envoie la boîte à ma tante becomes je la lui envoie. I am sending it to her. I'll again repeat the words. Indirect and direct object pronouns. Order and position of pronouns. The first column consists of object pronouns that can refer to direct or indirect objects. The second column consists solely of direct object pronouns corresponding to the third person singular and plural forms. And the third column consists again of only indirect object pronouns corresponding to the third person singular and plural forms. Generally, the first object is always the direct object which is placed after the subject. Next comes the indirect object pronoun followed by the verb. Subject plus se o de plus se o e plus verb. For example, j'envoie la boîte à ma tante. I am sending the box to my aunt. In this sentence, la boîte is the direct object and à ma tante is the indirect object. So when we replace the objects with the appropriate object pronouns, la boîte will be replaced with la and à ma tante will be replaced with lui because the indirect object is third person singular. J'envoie la boîte à ma tante becomes je la lui envoie. I am sending it to her. In the text, we have an example where the direct object precedes the indirect object. Je vais les lui donner après l'annonce de la nouvelle. Je vais donner les fleurs 
à maman après l'annonce de la nouvelle. I'll give them the flowers to her, to mother, after the news is announced. But if the direct object is in the first or second person, the order of the object pronouns will reverse. COE will precede the COD. For example, Marc nous envoie la boîte. Marc is sending the box to us. Marc nous l'envoie. Marc is sending it to us. Let me give you another example. Marc vous donne le dictionnaire. Marc is giving you all the dictionary. Marc vous le donne. Marc is giving it to you all. In the text, we have an example where the indirect object precedes the direct object. Voyons si papa va me la révéler. Voyons si papa va révéler la nouvelle à moi. Let's see if dad will reveal it, the news, to me. In the FAQ section, another chart has been provided with the various positions of the object pronouns. Now let me show you some characteristics about the object pronouns which we hadn't studied earlier. I'll first show how object pronouns are used with the imperative. Generally the direct or indirect object pronoun is placed before the verb. This is true with the negative imperative as well. N'invitons pas les voisins. Ne les invitons pas. Let's not invite them the neighbors. Ne téléphonez pas le médecin. Ne le téléphonez pas. Don't phone him, the doctor. But with affirmative imperative, the object pronoun comes after the verb and it is attached to the verb with a hyphen. For example, invitons les voisins. Invitons les. Let's invite them, the neighbors. Téléphonez le médecin. Téléphonez lui. Phone him, the doctor. Another rule regarding the use of object pronouns with the affirmative imperative is when the object is the first or second person singular. In such situations, me and te change to moi and toi. For example, tu M'invite, invite moi, invite me. Vous me téléphonez, téléphonez moi, phone me. One final point that I will touch upon before summarizing the lesson is the object of the transitive verb. In the two previous lessons, we learned that the object pronoun is the noun and its determiner. This statement is partly correct because the object pronoun can replace an entire phrase as well. For example, Je cherche le livre que mon frère m'a donné avant de partir pour les vacances. I'm looking for the book that my brother gave me before leaving for the holidays. Now let me quickly summarize the lesson. When a sentence has more than one object, the object pronouns need to follow a fixed order. For all the tenses, except the imperative mood, the direct object precedes the indirect object. But if the direct object is in the first or second person, the order of the object pronouns will reverse. The indirect object pronoun will precede the direct object pronoun. When the object pronoun is used with the affirmative imperative, the object pronoun comes after the verb and it is attached to the verb with a hyphen. Additionally, when the object is the first or second person singular, me and the change to moi and toi in the affirmative imperative.
In this third section, we will revise what we learned in today's session on sentences with two object pronouns. A short exercise has been provided. We need to replace the two objects with the appropriate object pronouns and make whatever changes may be necessary. Je rends les cahiers aux étudiants. The direct object is les cahiers and it can be replaced by les. The indirect object is aux étudiants and it can be replaced by leur. Since the direct object corresponds to the third person, it precedes the indirect object. Hence, the answer is je les leur rends. This sentence translates as I return them, the students, the notebooks. Je demande la permission à vous. The direct object is la permission and it can be replaced by la. The indirect object is à vous and it can be replaced by vous. Since the direct object corresponds to the second person, the indirect object pronoun precedes the direct object pronoun. Hence, the answer is je vous la demande. This sentence translates as I'm asking for it, the permission, to you. Il montre les photos à nous. The direct object is les photos and it can be replaced by les. The indirect object is à nous and it can be replaced by nous. Since the direct object corresponds to the first person, the indirect object precedes the direct object. Hence, the answer is il nous les montre. This sentence translates as he shows them, the photos, to us. Vous dites la vérité à votre mère. The direct object is la vérité and it can be replaced by la. The indirect object is à votre mère and it can be replaced by lui. Since the direct object corresponds to the first person, the indirect object precedes the direct object. Hence, the answer is vous la lui dites. This sentence translates as you tell it, the truth, to your mother. Elle explique la leçon à son fils. The direct object is la leçon and it can be replaced by la. The indirect object is à son fils and it can be replaced by lui. Since the direct object corresponds to the third person, it precedes the indirect object. Hence, the answer is elle la lui explique. This sentence translates as she explains it, the lesson, to him her son. With this, we come to the end of our fifth lesson. This lesson was divided into three sections. In the first section, I read out a French text in which the direct and indirect object pronouns occur several times. In the second section, I explained the position of the object pronouns when a sentence has more than one object. I also explained a few characteristics of direct and indirect objects. And finally, in the third section, we revised today's lesson by doing an exercise. I hope you enjoyed today's session. In the next session, we'll begin chapter 9. The first lesson will be on temporal expressions in French. I hope to see you in the next session. Thank you and à bientôt. See you soon.